In this video, we will demonstrate how to back up Datastax Enterprise data to Amazon S3 and restore that data using OpCenter. As shown on my screen, I'm using OpCenter to manage two Datastax Enterprise clusters. Cluster 1, a two-node cluster, and Cluster 2, which is a three-node cluster. These clusters are running in separate clouds. One cluster is running in Microsoft Azure and the other in Amazon Web Services. I have a small amount of data loaded into cluster two. You can select cluster two, choose the data tab, and I have a cycling key space and a hiking key space, which we'll use for this demo. To begin a backup, we'll go to the services tab and select the details link for the backup service. We're going to create an ad hoc backup. Alternatively, you can schedule a backup for later that either repeats on a regularly scheduled basis or runs just once. We'll choose Run Now to create an ad hoc backup. From here, I can choose one or more key spaces to backup. For clusters with multiple data centers, you can also select individual data centers to backup. For this demo, I'll select the Cycling and Hiking key spaces. I'll select true to be alerted if any failures occur. Next, I'll choose the location where I want to back up the data. The location menu includes backup destinations to an Amazon S3 bucket, S3 compatible location, Azure blob storage, and local file storage, such as a network file system. Both S3 compatible locations and Azure blob storage were added in the OpCenter 6.7 release. For more information on backing up to S3 compatible locations in Microsoft Azure, see the OpCenter documentation at docs.datastacks.com. In this case, we're backing up to Amazon S3. We'll enter the name of our Amazon S3 backup bucket, which is OpC backup bucket. And we'll also need to enter our AWS key and secret. For the region, the default AWS region is US West 1. If your bucket's in a different region, select that region from the menu. My bucket is in EU West 1, so we'll choose that one from the list. Now a few options are available for our backup to S3. On large backups in environments where bandwidth is limited, you might want to throttle your backup speed to S3, which you can do by selecting Throttle S3 Transfer Rate. Because this backup is relatively small, we're not going to select that one. And for these other options, see the Datastax documentation for an explanation. Now that we've defined our backup, we can save that location, which is now listed under location for our backup. OpCenter checks the AWS credentials when saving and notifies you if credentials are out of date or incorrect. An error message would indicate any issues which you must fix before proceeding. So now we're ready to take our backup. We can also add more backup destinations by clicking Add Location. In this case, we'll back up to both Amazon S3 and our local machine that's running OpCenter. So now we will create our backup. And now in the Activity tab, we can see that our backup to our local machine is completed. We can see that our two key spaces were backed up and that they were backed up to Amazon S3. So after we back up our data, we can restore it. For the sake of this demo, let's drop the key spaces that we just backed up on cluster 2. Using Datastack Studio, I can drop both of my key spaces pretty easily. In Datastack Studio, we have a few notebooks. We're going to select the notebook for cluster 2. First, let's select a table in the cycling key space. Now, let's drop the key space. Let's run a select statement on the cyclist name table to confirm that the key space was dropped. An error is returned saying that the key space cycling does not exist because we just dropped it, which is exactly what we want. And we'll also drop our hiking key space we can go back to OpCenter and restore the data that we backed up earlier. So now we can restore our backup. 
So we'll click Restore Backup, and we'll see that our options are completed backups, point in time backups, and other locations. So other locations are backups that might have been created by another cluster not managed by OpCenter, or backups to Amazon S3, an S3 compatible location, Azure Blob Storage, or the local file system. Let's take a quick look at point in time restores. A true point in time restore, once enabled, can restore to any moment in time without needing to take backups. As this message indicates, I must enable commit log backups to complete the point in time restore. If I close this window and go to the settings tab, we can see that commit log backups is turned off. So we'll cancel out of this. We'll click configure, and now we can enable our commit log backup. We need to specify staging and storage directories for the commit log backups. The backup staging directory specifies where commit logs are copied temporarily until they're transferred to all configured destinations. The backup storage directory specifies where commit logs are stored and retained on each node. So we'll go ahead and enter the default locations for both of these directories. And then we'll click Save. So OpCenter prompts us to restart the cluster, which is required to enable or disable commit logs. Because we are enabling commit logs for the first time, we'll skip draining the node before stopping it. On a production cluster, we'd want to first drain the node and ensure that all mem tables are written to disk. So now we can restart the cluster. We can go to the Activities tab. We can see here that our restart was successful. So now that the restart is complete, let's resume restoring our data. We'll select the Point in Time tab, and then we need to enter a point in time that we want to restore to. So let's enter 12 p.m as the time, and we'll keep the current day. For the backup location, we'll choose the S3 backup that we created earlier. So I'll select the cycling and hiking key spaces that we backed up. Because we want both key spaces, and there are no others in the backup, I'll just select all key spaces. Looking at the options, it was not actually necessary to drop my key spaces in the first place. OpCenter will automatically truncate or delete the existing data before the restore happens. Thanks, OpCenter. So let's kick off the restore process. This is a good time to discuss a new feature in OpCenter 6.7 that allows for restore speeds that are three to six times faster when the cluster topology matches the topology of the cluster when the backup was taken. A matching topology means that the data ownership on the ring per node matches the data ownership when the backup was taken. If OpCenter determines that the topology is the same, it automatically and directly loads your data into DSE without streaming. Additionally, there is no need for additional compactions or other processes to run after a restore takes place. And if you want to restore clusters with a different topology, no sweat. OpCenter automatically supports that scenario as well. It looks like a restore is complete. Let's verify in Datastack Studio. We'll describe keyspace cycling. And there you have it. Our data is beautifully restored. Not only can we restore data to our original cluster, but also to another cluster that is managed by the same OpCenter instance. We can also clone backup data from another location to a different cluster, such as from Azure Blob Storage, by choosing a location from the Other Locations tab. When restoring, we'll select our backup to Amazon S3 to restore from. We'll select all key spaces, just like in the point in time restore, but choose Cluster 1 as our target location for the restore. Now that the restore is complete, we should see the key spaces in the Data tab for Cluster 1. There's our cycling key space and our hiking key space. So with just a few clicks, the backup data from Cluster 2 was cloned effortlessly to Cluster 1. 
In this video, we reviewed how to back up your data to a variety of locations and how to restore that data to the same cluster. To learn more about backing up and restoring Datastax Enterprise with OpCenter, see the Datastax documentation at docs.datastax.com. Thank you for your time and attention.